This is a review for the Roborock S7 Max V, S7 Max V Plus, and S7 Max V Ultra. The S7 Max V comes with a standard charging dock. The S7 Max V Plus comes with a dock that automatically empties the robot's dustbin. The S7 Max V Ultra comes with a dock that automatically empties the robot's dustbin, cleans its mopping pad, and refills the robot's reservoir. In each case, the actual robot is the same. And so this review applies to all three robot vacuum packages I just mentioned. The S7 Max V replaced the S7 as Roborock's flagship robot vacuum in 2022. Compared to the S7, it offers improved performance and also adds several new features. Let's take a look. The S7 Max V's airflow was measured at 14 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.1 kPa. The S7 Max V features an almost identical brush roll and side brush configuration to that of the standard S7. Like the S7, the S7 Max V has an average sized direct cleaning path with a brush roll compartment that is right around six and a half inches wide. And like the S7, it too has an oversized side brush on one side that helps pull debris into its direct cleaning path. With this design and despite its below average measured airflow and suction, the S7 Max V performed very well in most of our debris pickup testing, including our carpet stress test. As part of a single cleaning cycle, most robots, including the S7 Max V, make two passes over all areas in the space. Most other robots leave behind a fair amount of debris after a single pass and have to pick up a good amount of debris during a second pass. The S7 Max V left behind almost no debris after a single pass and had to pick up only a small amount of debris during this second pass. In our carpet deep clean test on default power, the S7 Max V picked up 5 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. On maximum power, it picked up 8 grams of debris. This is a notable improvement over the S7 and a good result overall. In our hard floor stress test, the S7 Max V again demonstrated above average performance over a single pass. It again needed to pick up only a small quantity of debris during this second pass. The S7 Max V also performed very well cleaning edges. Certain previous generation Roborock LiDAR robots we tested, like the S4 Max, S5 Max, and S6 Pure, would path too far away from the edge to pick up edge debris properly. This pathing issue was fixed with the S6 Max V, and is also no longer an issue with the S7 and now the S7 Max V. All of these robots path sufficiently close to edges to clean them properly. In our robot vacuum crevice test, the S7 Max V did not perform well on default power or on maximum power, though most other robot vacuums we've tested also did not perform well in this test. In our human hair pickup test, the S7 Max V picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 70 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually. This isn't a good result, but it is a relatively average result nonetheless. Most other robot vacuums we tested also tangled very easily with the longer hair we used for this test. Most robots, including the S7 Max V, performed much better in our pet hair pickup test. It didn't pick up all of the tufts of hair in one pass, but it did eventually pick up and collect all of the shorter pet hair used for this test in its dustbin. This robot is of course able to mop, and so we tested how well it can mop. The S7 Max V has the same vibrating mopping pad as the S7. There's a metal bar that inserts into the mop attachment and vibrates the mopping pad as it's dragged across the floor. This vibration didn't really make much of a difference though in our mopping tests. In our first mopping test, in which we test how well the robot can clean up dried on grape juice stains, the S7 Max V performed very well cleaning the entire test surface in a single, approximately two minute long cleaning cycle. Though less expensive Roborocks with non-vibrating mopping pads performed just as well. The Q7, for example, also cleaned the test surface in a single two minute cleaning cycle without issue. In our second mopping test, in which we test how well the robot can clean up three sticky spots of jam, the S7 Max V also performed well. It got almost a perfect clean in a single run leaving only a very small amount of residue after one cleaning cycle. Again, we'll use the Q7 as a counterexample of a robot that doesn't have a vibrating mopping pad. 
in this test, the Q7 again performed very similarly to the S7 Max-V, also leaving a very small amount of residue after one cleaning cycle. Compared to robots like the Q7 with a static pad, the S7 Max-V's mopping pad is also able to lift off the surface, which at least theoretically enables the robot to mop and vacuum carpet on the same cleaning cycle without getting the carpet wet. The problem is that it lifts only 5 millimeters off the ground, which means that it really only works over very low pile carpet. And so this feature, just like mop vibration, has limited functionality, according to our testing. A unique S7 Max V mopping feature that does move the needle, so to speak, is Ultra Dock compatibility. The S7 Max V is currently the only Roborock robot vacuum that is compatible with the Roborock Ultra Dock. The Ultra Dock automatically does two things. First, it cleans the robot's mopping pad. Second, it refills the robot's water reservoir. For the dock to do these two tasks without issue, you do have to maintain it. You have to empty the large dirty water tank seated in the dock when it fills up, refill the large clean water tank seated in the dock when it runs low, and occasionally remove and clean a few different parts of the dock when they get dirty. Overall though, the Ultra Dock greatly automates the mopping process. With a standard mopping robot like the Q7, you have to do a lot of work to mop. You have to constantly remove, clean, and replace its mopping pad as it saturates with dirt. You also have to constantly refill its reservoir as it empties. With the Ultra Dock, you have to do much less work and with much less frequency. The whole mopping process is much more automated. And so Ultra Dock compatibility is definitely a big advantage for the S7 Max V when comparing its mopping functionality to that of other mopping robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to navigation, we tested the S7 Max V's general cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a clutter room. In our empty room testing, we see it pathing in a very efficient row by row cleaning pattern. It also moves in both vertical and horizontal rows so that it approaches all debris in the room from two perpendicular angles. This ensures the highest probability of it being able to pick up especially stubborn debris. It gets excellent coverage in this test as well. In our clutter room testing, we evaluate how well the robot can move around larger obstacles. And here the S7 Max V again does very well. It glides around all of the obstacles in the room without issue. It again paths very efficiently and cleans in both vertical and horizontal rows in the few open areas of the room. Finally, we can see that it gets good complete coverage in this type of environment as well. Like the S7, the S7 Max V uses a top mounted laser for its general navigation, but unlike the S7, it adds a front mounted camera for small obstacle detection and avoidance. The S7, without this camera, runs right over smaller obstacles. The S7 Max V, using its front mounted camera, is able to detect and avoid them. In our obstacle and avoidance testing, the S7 Max V performed very well. In this first trial, it consistently detects and properly keeps a sufficient distance away from all of the obstacles in the room. Most competitors, like the Echovax X1 Omni, are able to first detect most of these obstacles, but eventually push into them or run over them. The S7 Max V is able to not only detect, but also avoid all of the obstacles we use for this test. In the second trial, it again consistently detects and avoids all five obstacles. These are very impressive results. The only competitor we've tested that is able to detect and avoid small obstacles, as well as the S7 Max V, is the iRobot Roomba J7. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a full fledged mapping robot that has the ability to map multiple floors of your home. And using the Roborock Companion app, you can label different parts of the generated map set the robot to clean specific parts of the map, or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. In the same chart, also note the S7 Max V's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the S7 Max V one of the larger robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, First, let's talk about what we like. The S7 Max V picks up surface level debris on both carpet and hard floors very well. It gets sufficiently close to edges to pick up edge debris very well. 
it deep cleans carpet reasonably well on default power and very well on maximum power. Another strong positive for the S7 Max V is its ability to mop and its compatibility with the Roborock Ultra Dock, which automatically cleans the robot's mop, refills its reservoir, and empties its dustbin. The S7 Max V is also compatible with the Roborock Plus Dock, which doesn't automatically clean its mop, but still automatically empties its dustbin at a lower cost than the Ultra Dock. Another positive for the S7 Max V is navigation. Using LiDAR, it navigates very precisely and efficiently around larger obstacles. And using its front-facing camera, it does a terrific job detecting and avoiding smaller obstacles, according to our testing. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the biggest negative for the S7 Max V is probably its performance in our long hair pickup testing. Despite not having any bristles, its brush roll still tangles very easily with longer hair, according to our testing. We also don't like that the S7 Max V Ultra Dock doesn't come pre-installed with a dryer. You don't absolutely need a dryer, and if you want one, you can buy a dryer module separately from Roborock, but we would have preferred to just see it as a standard inclusion with the Ultra Dock. The S7 Max V also has a below average size dustbin, while the robot itself is fairly large, which may limit its access between or underneath certain furniture in your home. The S7 Max V is also one of the most expensive robot vacuums on the market. When it comes to general recommendations, let's first address the S7 Max V versus its predecessor, the S7. The biggest negatives for the S7 were poor carpet deep cleaning performance and the fact that it didn't offer small obstacle detection and avoidance. These are no longer negatives for the S7 Max V. It has improved carpet deep cleaning performance on default power and it has excellent carpet deep cleaning performance on maximum power. It also offers small obstacle detection and avoidance. The S7 Max V also compares very favorably to other higher priced premium robot vacuums. It is the only premium robot vacuum we've tested that offers small obstacle detection and avoidance, automatic bin emptying, and automatic mop cleaning, and has all of these features working properly without any issues. Competitors like the Echovax X1 Omni have the same features, but don't have all of them working properly as they should. The X1, for example, does not have properly functioning obstacle detection and avoidance. It didn't consistently detect and avoid any of the obstacles we use to test this functionality. The S7 Max V is also a very good robot vacuum in general outside of its premium features. It generally vacuums very well, mops well, and navigates without issue. It's the best premium robot vacuum we've tested, and it's also one of the best robot vacuums we've tested overall. We recommend just getting the robot itself if your budget is more limited. Get the S7 Max V Plus if you're primarily buying the robot for vacuuming or get the S7 Max V Ultra if you're buying the robot to vacuum and mop frequently. See the description of this video for buy links for these different models, as well as a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend. And thank you for watching.